We're really lucky to have such a strong following on social media of over 100,000 people and we get asked some really interesting questions so we thought it would be really good to answer some of those today. So we've been asked how much does your kit weigh including your suits? Well we carry quite a lot of different bags with a lot of different specialist equipment in and specialist drugs. Each one of those bags is about 20 kilograms and we can have up to two or three of those for any one job so up to about 60 kilos worth of equipment to be carried and then our suits are probably about two kilograms or thereabouts so you can be looking at anywhere between sort of 65 to 70 kilograms worth of equipment that once you've landed the helicopter you might have to carry a significant way to get to a patient. So another question that we've had is how many calls do you average each day? So between our three helicopters and our two cars, we're averaging at the moment about 13 jobs a day. And those are, are taskings to our most critically ill and injured patients. Can you show us your radios and how they work? So we used to get calls through to the base on a red phone that used to ring um, and we'd have to go in, answer the phone and find out what the job was and where that job was tasking us to and then get on the helicopter and fly to that job. And now we use radios, which are handheld ones like this. And this allows us to actually have the job sent straight through to the radio, which means that we can already be moving towards the helicopter even as the job comes through, which can take minutes off our response time and get to the patient much more quickly. They also allow us to talk to fire, police, and other major incident channels. So it gives us the opportunity to speak to a more wide range of people who are all there to help the patient. So the next question, can you use what three words to, sum, to find somebody? Uh, that's, that's a good question and it's quite new to us. On our run of the mill jobs that might be in, in city centres or somewhere like that, then we'll, we'll get quite an accurate location via a grid reference because of people will know where they are via street names. One of our quite regular jobs is to go to quite rural areas and that might be that might be someone say walking up in the Peak District. They may have had a, an, an incident where they've fallen off some rocks or they might just become unwell. But the trouble is when they ring they're in an area that, that they don't really know and it's very difficult for us to pinpoint or spot from the air somebody when there's when there's lots of people around so if they can now use the what three words app and that information can be passed to our control room that can then be converted into an os grid reference passed to us which allows us to immediately identify the patient and could cut several minutes off our attendance time because we know where to go straight away how many missions do we attend each year this number goes up year on year and um, at the moment it's about four and a half thousand missions every year which ties into the last question really in that missions cost two and a half thousand pounds and we're doing more and more and it, and it costs more and more so all donations are so important to, to provide the service. Right so we've got a joint question next um, what is your favourite thing about being a critical care paramedic and a doctor? For me, one of the best things about being a doctor, certainly on this platform where I'm working pre-hospitally, so at the roadside on a helicopter, is just the variety of people that you get to help and the variety of situations that you're working within. So one day you might be sort of landing up in the Mulvans or the Peak District, the next day you may be on a roadside. You could be helping adults, children, one patient, many patients. And I think as a doctor, you can bring skills that you would normally only see in a hospital, maybe an emergency department or theatres, and you can use those skills in that pre-hospital, out-of-hospital environment. For me, um, I would echo all of that, the, the variety of the job, not knowing what you're going to go to next, having to, having to bring together all the skills and all the knowledge that you've learned over all the years to, to deal with that situation as it's presented to you and almost come up with a, with a problem-solving sort of situation. The other thing I think, I, I joined the emergency services because I wanted to go to life-threatening and critical incidents and for me being on the helicopter is, you know, is, is at the top of, of that sort of service delivery if you like. Um, I work with a, a, a fantastic bunch of people and 
a lot of people ask us, you know, how do you deal with what you go to? And for me, we'll, we'll, never, we'll never be able to stop a lot of the, the tragic illnesses and incidents that happen every day, but we can do our best to go and try and make a little bit of difference and maybe save somebody's life or, or make their recovery better than what it would have been without if the helicopter and, and the critical care that we provide wasn't there. So I think it's just, it's that job satisfaction and, and what you get from, from doing what we do that, that makes it for me really. And another question, what are the top types of missions that you attend? So the most common incidents that we attend would be RTC, so road traffic collisions involving cars, coaches, buses, pedestrians, motorcyclists, um, etc. Those, those make up really quite a lot of our work. We also go to leisure activities such as horse riding or sporting events, motocross. Um, industrial accidents as well where um, a lot of people have accidents with machinery. We also attend a lot of cardiac arrests and other critically medically ill people such as sepsis or respiratory arrests and things like that. Um, and it's not always critical patients that we go to. Sometimes we might go to what we call an, an access job and that might be just somebody that's broken an ankle up on a hill somewhere where there's just no access by land ambulance. And we can just land right next to them, pop them on the aircraft and then nip them to the local emergency department. So it, it doesn't always have to be serious. So that's all the questions for now. We enjoy answering them, so keep them coming. And you can search for us on all of the social media platforms. Thank you. Thank you.